um, good afternoon, everyone. And as I'm in Wales, I'm um, And that's as far as I'm going. Is that good enough? Um, and thank you for being here to listen to my experiences of what I think make a successful food destination and how I weave it into my life. Um, I live about 10 miles west of Ludlow on the North Herefordshire, nearly in Shropshire borders, uh, right on the edge of Wales. And uh, I do quite a lot of border hopping in England and raiding parties into Wales, um, much as it's been for centuries. Um, it comes under food, F, 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 food destination, that one there. <laughs> the pictures are coming. They are, honestly. Um, these days aren't quite so bloody, and the Welsh marches make an excellent hunting ground for food now. Um, much has been written about Ludlow, which is just 10 miles from me, you know, and it's the food capital of the West, if not the world, we'll say, near Ludlow. But anyhow, I'm not going to bang on about Ludlow because um, so much, you know, everybody knows about Ludlow. I'm, I'm here to sort of be a little bit um, closer to home. Um, my primary business, primary business is my home, Lower Buxton, where I live with my husband Henry, and from which we provide uh, bed and breakfast for guests from all, all over the world, and we serve um, dinner to them practically every night. We offer bring your own horse holidays, and we have a shepherd's hut for glam glamping holidays at the bottom of the garden and I run cook days and demonstrations, and private dinner parties, food safaris for my guests, outside catering and a bit of event management. And uh, we have a holiday cottage in Ludlow and I also organize a food fair. And um, as diverse as some of the above are, uh, there is a common thread linking them all and that is food, uh, local food, seasonal food, um, food with provenance, distinctiveness, and authenticity, with a story to tell. Um, I don't know how to get the next pictures up. Oh, next, maybe it just goes next. Okay, that's my house, that's home. Um, down there, ah, okay, so I'm just practicing, sorry about this. Oh, next. Okay, okay, um, that's a view from home. We'll come to more in a minute. Um, we've been here at Lower Buxton for 12 years and very on, early on, disillusioned with the big grip of the multinational supermarkets, we made the decision to do no shopping in any of them. And we swiftly became a supermarket-free zone and developed our catch line of um, all our food is either home reared and grown and made by us or locally sought, bought and caught from small-scale artisan farmers and producers and suppliers, uh, thus supporting our local businesses and keeping our money in the local rural economy, which is so important. Um, we developed a good reputation for serving local food strictly in season, um, all through the year, and soon found ourselves in demand, not just because of the beautiful area where we live, uh, but because people were beginning to realise that there is an alternative to mass-produced food from uncaring corporate suppliers, and mine was a business which actually cared about what it fed its guests and didn't just pay lip service to the local word, local food word. Um, so I was being asked to cater for private dinner parties um, at Lower Buckton and to go out on tour to local self-catering holiday houses you know, the sort that sleep 20 to 30 people. And so my specialty became um, only to offer menus solely consisting of local seasonal food. And it gives me perverse pleasure to refuse to serve asparagus at Christmas or make mango full at, at any time of the year, um, even if they may be the client's favorite treats. Um, I want my food to be local, authentic, and distinctive to the area. And I want my punters to relish the asparagus in its season, and I want to look forward to the first leak of winter. And my husband normally plants 365 leeks, one for every day of the year. But we won't be harvesting those until November. Um, we've won various awards for our breakfasts, and we keep um, a pair of Berkshire pigs from time to time. 
um, which free range out, out in the yard and in the field. And, um, and so my food destination was born, and the tourists, or in other words, my guests, were actually coming to stay at Lower Buckton, not just to enjoy our lovely area, but also my cooking. And they were very keen to engage and find out more of my food philosophy as well. So it wasn't long before I realized I could sort of work this one up into a business. And uh, people were asking me for more information, uh, cookery courses, demonstrations. Where do I actually go out to get all these wondrous things? Uh, because they were acutely aware that the sort of food I was extolling was not readily available in their friendly neighborhood, Tesco. So I developed a series of cookery demonstration days, sort of informal gatherings of like-minded people who'd come to my house and gather around my aga, and I'd demonstrate various recipes from all my freshly gathered food and to showcase the locally produced high-quality seasonal ingredients that we have in our area with absolutely nothing from a supermarket. Um, and obviously finishing it all up with a convivial lunch washed down with some local cider and wine and perry, etc. Um, everything done with the idea of exploring the area's food and drink culture and heritage, of which we have a fantastic infrastructure of that. Um, and the, the target market for these types of days is sort of endless. For me, it was um, you know, family days and hen parties, stag parties, girlfriend-boyfriend days, mother and daughter days, um, bonding days, a few small corporate days, all sorts. And um, sometimes I've been invited to do cookery demonstrations at local clubs and organizations and various food festivals in the area. Um, anything, really, to highlight... Uh, the area as a food destination and um, to discover its indie food shops and farm shops and markets and the farm gate, you know, for, for food, drink, food and drink producers. Um, I've developed sort of food safaris which are quite good from the people that stay with me and I plan the days to visit differing local growers and producers who are obviously more than happy to share their experiences. Um, but I've found it's more often better to get a feel from the guests as to what they're interested in. It's probably not a good idea to take a group of ardent vegetarians to visit the local butcher with a slaughterhouse at the back, which I have down the road, um, and not a good idea to take a reformed alcoholic. Um, he won't really appreciate a morning's tasting at the organic cider farm. Uh, but we visit, you know, farmhouse cider makers and fruit juice people and vineyards and cheese dairies, small holdings producing organic fruit and vegetables and conservation farms with heritage cattle and sheep, preserving the old breeds and the, the list goes on. And um, then there's always a tap room or a tea room for a good old traditional pub lunch or afternoon tea. And um, I know foraging is all the rage, which is quite amusing because it's what country folk have done forever. And um, I've found a way to make a food safari on the wild side on horseback, uh, which brings me to my Bring Your Own Horse Holidays, which you may think has nothing to do with food, uh, but in fact, I use our days out trekking across farmland and hills and moors to recce secret places where we can jump off and stuff our saddlebags with mushrooms and crab apples and so on. Uh, one day I came home with my pockets stuffed with globe artichokes, and uh, no, I hadn't nipped them from the local allotment and um, uh, walnuts spied off the back of my horse, but I do normally go back the next day and ask permission to pick them because they're on a private track. <laughs> uh, also, once a year, a whole gang of us crosses Wales solely on bridal paths and green lanes and sleeping out in barns en route, and we pick mushrooms as we go and feed ourselves on the best local food which a backup team procure procures along the way. And... Um, even our Millstream Camp Shepherd's Hut plays a part in my food destination scheme of things. And the guests who stay are often young, upwardly mobile, 20s and 30s, and are very much into food and where it comes from. So I give them a list of the local farm shops. Um, thank God for the Ludlow Food Centre, which stays open late on Fridays. And, um, and the list of suppliers for them to shop at when they're here, and we encourage them to get the fires lit and get cooking, and we let them raid our, our vegetable garden for that. 
and sometimes I make up a hamper of local food for them or sometimes I'll take them out on a short food safari and um, I'm doing a slow gin making day soon which will be fun with them. Uh, likewise with our holiday cottage in Ludlow. I make no bones about asking the guests not to bring their supermarket food from home. Um, I, I see no point in coming to stay in Ludlow and not to get involved with its local food culture. Um, I leave them a breakfast basket of local food to get them in the mood, uh, plus the list of my approved shops for them to shop in. Uh, when they leave, I go through the kitchen cupboards and fridge with a fine tooth comb, removing any of the offending supermarket brand packets that they've left behind, and then I photograph them and put them on Twitter and Pinterest in my hall of shame. That's how you know, annoyed I get with people when they bring, bring their sort of food into my house that doesn't fit with my, my, my idea of a food destination. Um, so how do I get the message out there? Um, over the years, I've been involved with various food events in my area, and uh, a couple of years ago, we had Hereford Food Week, and our food tourists were encouraged to wriggle down small country lanes to visit our diverse collection of small-scale producers who'd agreed to open their doors. Um, I did a sort of a pop-up um, cook dem uh, restaurant thingy one lunchtime at home. And um, at the same time, we had the great British food cycle pass through the area, a completely bonkers chap from Yorkshire who set himself the challenge of cycling from John O'Groats to Land's End on an old iron frame butcher's bike, complete with wicker basket on the front. There were no gears or anything. Um, he created a relay of food for the whole of his way, and he'd call on a local food producer, collect some cheese, and then cycle some miles down the road and give it to the next one, and then maybe leave with a bottle of beer to take on down to the baker for a loaf of bread, and so on. Um, he mostly survived upon hospitality along the route, and I think his journey was fairly unplanned, just re relying on the current local producer to put him on the right track for the next one. Um, I'm sorry, I've got these photographs, but I don't know how to make them work. So you just have to use your imagination. There's a lovely photograph of him um, being rescued off the side of the road. Um, he'd put an SOS out on Twitter, and I happened to be just up the road, and his plight was not helped by the fact that he wore a bespoke suit of Yorkshire tweeds, complete with bow tie, plus fours, woolen stockings and brogues, and the weather was in the 80s, and, you know, and he was on his way to somewhere in the middle of Herefordshire, and he was just exhausted. Although he wouldn't allow me to give him a lift, he just asked me to put his kit bag in the car, and he carried on cycling. Um, a true eccentric who did it all simply to visit as many artisan food producers he could between John O'Groats and Land's End. Um, I think he came through Abergavenny as well. Uh, also pitching up during that, that Herefordshire Food Week was another eccentric couple called, drink, who called themselves Drink Britain. And they'd had their snazzy little mini lettered up and they were using their fortnight's annual summer holiday to drive between and taste, of course, as many rural artisan cider, perry, beer and wine um, producers that they could find the length of breadth of um, Scotland, England and Wales. And what better county than Herefordshire as a food destination for the cider and the perry? So I think my main message to you is don't wait for people to come knocking on your door. You really do have to work hard at getting the message out about your own local distinctive food as a destination. And about seven years ago, I got together with the owners of a local business just down the lane from me. And uh, we wanted to highlight our beautiful area as a tourism food destination, but at the same time involve the local community. So we came up with the idea of our own little local food festival to showcase the, our myriad of small, out-of-the-way producers right on our own doorstep, um, and to introduce them to the people who actually lived here. So here comes the regeneration and community engagement bit. So tick that box. Um, thus was born our Mortimer Country Food Fair, and we describe ourselves as being just a little bit underground, just a little bit anarchic. Uh, probably because we just went out there and did it all ourselves, entirely self-financing, absolutely no grants, funding and corporate sponsors telling us what to do. 
Um, we've, we've done it to bring our local community together through food, and the Mortimer Country Food Fair now attracts visitors from near and far, and the exhibitors love it. Uh, so many of the big food festivals have become quite expensive for the small micro-producers or the ones just starting out, so we provide a bit of a stepping stone. And over the years, some, some of the ones that started with us seven years ago now have gone on to much bigger and better things, and they don't come back to us, uh, but we've got other little ones coming along the way, so we're a sort of a kindergarten. Um, uh, we, we strive to keep it local and distinctive, and uh, we handpick the small storeholders and won't have anyone who doesn't fit in with our ethos. Um, but earlier this year, we bit the bullet, or took the king's shilling or whatever, I didn't really want to do it, um, and applied for a lottery grant, uh, which has paid for sound equipment and enabled us to, to provide free cookery classes for children at uh, this show that we just held in last July. Um, I suppose, well, the lottery money, I thought, I suppose I don't really mind about it because it's like stupid me who buys a lottery, lottery ticket every so often and loses. So it's, it's, it's the stupid people's money as opposed to the taxpayers' money. Um, so anyway, next year's Mortimer Country Food Fair is on the Saturday, the 12th of July, and I've got a few flyers at the back of the room. Um, so I do a lot of shouting about food wherever I am to get my message across and have been on a few TV shows ranging from the People's Cookbook a few years ago to Market Kitchen and Countrywise Kitchen, and then our food fair was filmed for My Tasty Travels last year. Um, anything to get the F word out, which is food in this case, and where it comes from, and where and, where and how to get it, which basically is here with me or here in Abergavenny. Um, so don't hide or shrink away from telling it like it is. So we've sort of come a full circle, but of course what I'm doing now is nothing really new. And um, this was brought home to me by an elderly couple who'd been staying bed and breakfast with us for a few days. Um, she's a Shropshire lass, now living in North Wales. Uh, in fact, she was born in the next door parish to me. So I bored her with all my banging on about what we do at Lower Buckton with our f local food in season, blah, blah, blah cook days and demonstrations and food safaris and food festivals and so on. And then she sort of, you know, patted my hand and sort of said, you know, yes, dear, yes, dear. And then she told me that she and her sister in the 1950s took over their father's farmhouse and turned it into a farmhouse holiday destination. And they offered not only just breakfast and dinner, but lunch and high teas as well. And absolutely everything was produced on the farm from their own butter, cream and eggs through to the vegetables, pork, lamb and beef. Uh, but of course, that was the only way to do it in those days. And I do feel uh, a lot of people have completely lost touch with their food and um, treat it just um, as fuel rather than something to be enjoyed and savoured and appreciated. And I'm hoping that I'm doing a tiny bit to bridge the gap, and I'm sure all of you here are as well. Um, so what makes a local uh, successful food destination? Eat, drink, travel. Um, in the words of um, Petrini of Slow Food, um, you can travel, but your food shouldn't. Um, we all have to eat and drink. We all love to eat and drink. We all like to travel. Um, combine the three with some local distinctiveness and don't take it too seriously and enjoy making local food work for you. Uh, whether you're the producer, procurer, or consumer, just I just say make local food work for you. And um, if you think you thought I was joking about my hall of fame from the food left in my cottage, this is the, this is the latest little offering that will be going on Twitter and Pinterest soon. So it's a what is it? A bird's eye one pound steak and kidney pie in my holiday cottage in Ludlow, which is. <laughs> the food capital of the West. <laughs> um, so you can get flyers for my food festival for next year at the back of the room. And um, thank you very much for listening to me. Sorry about the photographs, but I thank couldn't you. do two things at once.